Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna discuss about the inbound call flow. So in my previous lectures, I discussed about the outbound call flow that is internal call as well as external call to the PSTN world. So now if I talk about the inbound call flow, what all are the things we needed, right? So first thing which we need, like if someone is making a call from cell phone to a, to a Cisco CUCM number, like maybe a number which is assigned to you in your environment. Like if I'm making a call from my cell number to my IP phone number, right? So what are other things? First, we need it. So if you are making a call, then that call will land on the particular gateways, right? On that particular organization's gateway. And on the gateway, you should create the dial peers first because the, your call will land on that gateway. And if the gateway doesn't have dial peers, it will not accept the call, right? So dial peers, you should have like two dial peers. One is VoIP and one is ports. We have two dial peers. VoIP is used when you have everything related to IP environment, like a SIP environment, right? And ports is used when you want to connect that particular environment with the PST in world where you are using PRIs, right? So in this VoIP and ports, we will be having inbound dial peer as well as outbound dial peer, right? Inbound as well as outbound dial peer. I, I'll just show it to you with the help of an example. But let's just uh, get the concept. What is the dial peer and why is it needed? Like if any call is coming from the PSTN or PSTN world, it will land on your gateway, right? And on the gateway, you should be having that inbound dial peer to accept that call and inbound dial peer, that should be a port dial peer if you are using that PRI on your gateway. That should be inbound and ports dial peer. If your service provider is using ITSP, that is IT service provider, uh, it is using SIP environment, then that would be an inbound VoIP dial peer, right? And now if you are if you are receiving that call and then that call should go to the CUCM after gateway, then your outbound dial peer, outbound VoIP dial peer will hit, right? And outbound ports dial peer will hit only in case if you want to, uh, if you want to send that call from your gateway to the PSTN world when you are using PRI, right? So let me just show it to you with the help of an example, what all are the dial peers, how we can create it, right? So now you can see these are the four dial peers and all configuration is showing. Like here you can see, let me just uh, uh, take this pointer like a pen. Okay, so now here you can see this is our CUCM, which are this IP 198.18.133.3. This is our cube, or you can say gateway, and this is our PSTN world, which have this IP that is 10.1.40.11. Right, so now here you can see it is showing inbound land dial peer, this is outbound land dial peer, this is outbound van dial peer, and this is inbound van dial peer. Here you can see all the dial peer is showing VoIP. Here you can see this is also a VoIP. This is a VoIP. This is VoIP and this is VoIP as well. Why every is VoIP? We do not have any ports because this is ITSP SIP trunk, which is going to the PSTN world. And this is SIP trunk is also we are using between CUCM and Q. So everything is SIP, so we don't need a port style peer. Right. So if we have any PRI terminated here on the gateway, then these two dial peers would be ports. This one should be ports and this one should be ports as well. If this is PS, if this PSTN is using PRIs, right? So now let's discuss about this VoIP and ports. So it's just a naming convention. Like if you are using PRI, then you should use ports. If you are using uh, this PST, this uh, SIP trunk, then you should use VoIP. Second difference would be in the PRI, you should use like 
here you can see it showing session target IPv4 and then the IP address of your SIP server that is 10.1.40.11. In case of port style peer, in case of port style peer, you should use the port number. Right. In case of Portal Peer, you should use the port number. Let me show it to you as well. This is Ports Dial Peer here. You can see it's showing Dial Peer Voice 2000 Ports. This is Dial Peer Voice, and then this is a random number, random number, and this is Ports. Here you can see it's showing port 1 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23. That means this is the port number where your PRI is terminated like in this case as well here the port is 0 slash 0 slash 123 port 0 slash 0 slash 023 this is the port number where your pri is terminated right so let's get back to the same so here we are discussing about the VoIP only right we have already discussed about ports now let me tell you about the VoIP. so now you can see if let's let's discuss about the inbound call first this is an inbound call right inbound call is coming from pstn world to the cuc so if any call is coming from PS pstn to the gateway that is this cube here it will hit the inbound voip dial peer first right this is when then that's why it will hit this inbound van dial peer right this inbound dial peer is already configured here. This is for inbound. Here you can see dial peer voice 200 VoIP. Description is inbound from provider to queue. Session protocol SIP version 2 we are using. And now to accept every call from the PSTN world, you should use this incoming call number dot because this is an internal, this is like an inbound call. That's why we need to use incoming call number dot. And this dot means we will accept every call, right? And then these things like SIP bind control source interface, media, DTM, every layer, codex, all these things, which are like common for all the voice, voice uh, dial peers, right? The main thing inbound why, why, when dial peer will hit. Now the call is on gateway. Now it should hit the outbound land dial peer because this call is going to CUCN. Now it will hit this outbound line dial peer, dial peer voice. This is a random number and then VoIP. Here you can see description is outbound land dial peer and from cube to CUCM, right? Translation profile, destination pit. The main thing is this destination pattern. So now destination pattern is saying plus one, four, zero, eight, nine, four, four, then dot, 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 dot. That means someone from PSTN is calling, if calling plus one, four, zero, eight, nine, four, four, and then for any four digits, then it will hit this destination pattern. And once it hits, it will go to this CUCM. And how it will go to CUCM? You should mention it as we mentioned it here, session target IPv4, and then the IP address of your CUCM, 198.18 dot one three three dot three right got it then the same things voice class it bind media control dtmf codec and forward digits it is showing forward digits 11 that means it will forward these four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven it will not forward this plus it will just forward these 11 digits to your cucm right this is our inbound call so now the call is reached on your CUCM, then it will check whether the translation pattern is created. It will go to translation pattern and then it will check it under the directory number, whether if directory number is created or not. If call is coming on your gateway from the PSTN world to the CUCM, then your directory number should be there. Only then it will hit, only then it will land on that particular directory number, right? Now, if we talk about this, Inbound or outbound when dial peer, which we discussed in our previous lecture, like call is already landed on the gateway. But now gateway should accept that call. And in that case, this inbound land dial peer will hit. Right? This is for the outbound calls, outbound calls. Now here you can see dial peer voice 100 VoIP, same inbound land dial peer and from CUCM to Q. Session protocol SIP V2 we are using incoming called number 8T here. That means we will accept 
every call starting with eight. Here you can see if I talk about my previous example, then that would be a different or you can see incoming call number dot. You can just mention it dot here. If dot is there, that means it is accepting every call like here in this case incoming call number dot, right? If dot is there, it means it will accept every call. Then same things, voice class, if bind, media, DTM, affiliate, and then this coding. Now the code, now the call is on your gateway. It accepted the call from CUCM, right? Now it is sending the call to the PSTN word that is which is using SIP trunk. Now it will hit the outbound call. This one outbound when dialogue from cube to service provider. Destination pattern, why it is showing 81? Because we are accepting incoming call number 8T here. But I just clicked like, if you click dot, then it will accept everything, right? So now destination pattern 81, any number between two to nine, then any number between zero to nine, any number between two to nine, then any number between zero to nine, like six digits. Right. Then same session protocol SIP version two. We are using session target. This is our SIP server address 10.1.40.11. Right. Session transport and then same thing CTMF codec and forward digits 11. That means it is sending the four, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. It is not sending this eight. Right. So that's why you need to add this forward digits 11. So it will forward this. 11 digits to your PSTN world, right? So I hope this thing is clear, like inbound calls, outbound calls, dial peers, device pool, route pattern, route list, translation pattern, SLRG, everything is clear to you. If you have any queries, just let me know in the comment section and please hit like, share and subscribe as well and press the bell icon so that you will get notifications of all my upcoming videos. And please let me know in the comment section if you want a particular video on any anything related to on the CUCM, CUC, and maybe uh, you can say related to the Jabber, related to Gateway, anything, and troubleshooting videos, anything. If you want, just let me know in the comment section. I will surely try to create those videos. And now, uh, in the next upcoming lecture, I'm going to discuss about that SLRG in detail, right? right? So I will just create an environment like I will create multiple gateways, multiple sites, then, and then I will add the multiple device pools, add, multi, add different, different route groups under that SLRG and we'll show it to you. I hope you really like this video, right? So I'm just waiting for your comment section and then I'll surely reply. Thank you.